Welcome back. Today I'm going to give you some clues and some recommendations about house museums in Italy. Because when you come to Italy and you've already been several times, you've seen the big important museums. These are niche museums and there are some in most of the cities. Well, starting in the north, uh, the best museums in the north all the way down to the south. Today I'll be talking to you about the first three in the north, the first three cities. And in the second part, we'll do the central and southern Italy and the islands. So we'll start with Trieste in northern Italy. These are a few vi visions of my first and my favorite museum in Trieste, which is the Museo Rivoltella. This was a large palazzo that belonged to a very wealthy man, Barone Pasquale Rivoltella. He made his money in insurance and shipping and merchant, he was also a merchant. And so he built this huge building. He never married, he was a bachelor and he really liked to entertain. So he made this fantastic building and had a ballroom on the top floor. Well, another way he made money, he was connected with the construction of the Suez Canal. So when you enter the front door, you'll see this fa uh, fantastic fountain that represents the making of the Suez. And there's lots of paintings also connected with the Suez Canal. Upstairs on uh, one of the many sitting rooms, there's his portrait. And he loved to be surrounded by luxury. Notice the inlaid floors. Even small details like the banister, the handrail, covered in velvet and with the face on it. Now he was also very interested in modern technology. So this frame over here, it's not really a painting or frame, it's a camera oscura. It's a sort of a secret uh, peek hole into the piazza down below so he could watch from the uh, privacy of his building, watch what was happening in the piazza down below in, and in the port where his ships came in. And another part that's very nice is the entrance way where you see the carriage that he used to go around the town and the livery that his servants wore. And one of the good things about house museums, you have the place to yourself. It's like a personal visit. There's very few people. In fact, they have so much time on their hands that they love to take the people up to the secret places like the terrace and show them a view of the harbor. So when the Baron... Uh, Rivoltella died. He gave his building and all of his collection to the city and then inside the new section they actually took his building next door and turned it into a modern art museum in which he displayed all of the paintings and sculptures that he collected and uh, one of my favorites, it's too much inside. You have to sort of choose one or two objects that you really like and I chose this wonderful sculpture by Pietro Canonica and this beautiful painting by Carl Smith. So it's a double museum, the old house where he lived and the modern art that he collected. Just a few steps away from that museum, there's another villa, beautiful villa called Museo Sartorio, another family of Trieste that made lots of money and then donated their building and their collections. There we have all of the paintings, the uh, portraits of the members of the family, and all of their ceramics and all the objects that they collected and used, even down to the kitchen. Look at the, the fantastic collection of copper pots and molds that you will see. So these are 19th century, but they have objects going back even to the 12th century, like that ivory uh, coffer by the Imbriaci. So again, the reception rooms, the bedrooms, the furnishings, the original things that the people used, and lots of uh, personal attention from the staff because they have such so few visitors. Now we'll skip down to Venice. Venice is, um, uh, has many wonderful, huge museums with lots of lines, but if you want to go into a building, uh, a palazzo that belonged to Do a Doge family, I would suggest the Palazzo Mocinigo. Here it is, right on the Grand Canal. The family was so important, they gave seven doge to the city of Venice. And so over the centuries, all of their objects that they collected in their palazzo are, were set aside, and so their furniture, their art are all there for you to admire. This is the portego, which is the entrance hall. And throughout the building, there are 20 rooms actually that you can visit, but the main um, emphasis inside the collection is textiles, costumes, and perfumes. So when you visit this Palazzo Mocinigo, you get to see how people dressed, 
and how they lived during the period that the Mochinigo doges were around, 16th century, 17th. And one room is even dedicated to men's waistcoats, so it's textiles, it's costumes. And seven different rooms are also given over to the production of perfume. Perfumes were a very important part of commerce in Venice and also textiles. These things were brought over from the East and this is one of the two of the things that really made Venice wealthy, the production of beautiful textiles and perfumes. So this is Palazzo Mocinigo in Venice. Then Milano. Milano is famous for its fashion and in right smack in the center of the fashion district via Monte Napoleone is this house museum, Palazzo Bagatti Valsecchi, which was owned by two brothers, uh, Fausto and Giuseppe. They both lived in sections of the palazzo and they wanted to make um, show you what a lordly Renaissance home would have looked like. They have ceramics, they have ivory, arms and armor, wonderful paintings, collections of glass and ivory, and all displayed beautifully. Uh, also here, they, they have um, their private rooms. The bedrooms of the two brothers are there. And notice also the strange objects that some of them collected, these esoteric uh, things, not just artworks. So these are two, um, two rooms of the many rooms that you can see in the Bagatti Valsecchi. Oh, by the way, before you go to visit any of these museums, check the times, check what, what days they are open. Because they're not major museums, they're not open every single day of the week. So always check before you go to visit. And then uh, you will have most of the time the place to yourself. So we'll stop here after those first three cities in northern Italy. And make sure you check out my books uh, on my website. It's now also in Italian. And uh, this is my email. So check uh, back and make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on part two and will be coming soon, house museums in central Italy, and I'll be talking about all of these different cities. So thank you, and we'll see you in a while.